Hi, I'm Emily Rudd. I'm a lettering artist, illustrator, and designer. I'm here with Stabilo today demonstrating some of their favorite products. So today we've got the Carbothello, so that's their chalk pastel pencil, and also the Woody 3-in-1, which is a watercolor, pastel, and crayon all rolled into one. Today's craft, we're gonna be doing illuminated lettering. So this is a really fun project for people who are learning lettering. Maybe they wanna get a start, try and work on letter forms, but also incorporate some illustrations to make it a little more easier for an artist to transition to lettering. So for example, today, here's a more developed example. Today we'll go a little simplified, but feel free to take your creativity and let it go however far you want to with the project during the demo day. Um, but for here, you can see we've got a little combination of the Carbothello and the Botanicals. And then we've got the Woody 3-in-1 as accent points throughout. We've got nice metallics and some gradients developed with the Woody as well. So today, we're going to be diving into these two products and we'll get started. So today to start off, we have a couple ways of doing this. I'm a lettering artist, so I prefer to trace down my um, letter form already. I use the Carbothello White, that's this one right here. They're super nice because you can pick it up with a kneaded eraser or just go over it with the Woody or the Carbothello throughout this process. So you don't really have to worry about getting that perfect outline. This is just kind of a gestural sketch to get the right idea and the outline developed for yourself. For someone who's maybe more of a beginner at lettering, I also recommend you could do a stencil. So all you'll be doing is just laying a stencil in the middle, going along the outside, and just doing a quick trace down. You don't need heavy pressure. These chalk pencils are really good. They're very vibrant, especially on a dark surface. So don't stress about pressing really hard. Again, this is kind of just a gestural sketch to get the idea down. So if we just did a quick one, here's how it would look with the stencil. So again, it's totally up to preference. If you have a lettering artist in-house, maybe they sketch their own. If you want to use a stencil, both work as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the one I developed today. And we will hop right on in. So the first thing I usually like to start out with is the woody. The woody has kind of got that wax consistency and it's going to be a little more tolerant of smearing. I'm a messy artist, so whenever I do stuff, I have a tendency to kind of smear around. So I like starting with the woody just because it makes my life a heck of a lot easier. I'd recommend if you're a beginning artist to start with that as well. Um, the color palettes I usually recommend for beginners for dark surface papers for woodies are either the greens or the blues. We've got a huge color range. All colors work really well on dark surfaces, but just for the ease of today, I'm going to go ahead and go with the blue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the color palette and decide what range of colors I wanna work with. Usually when I pick a color palette, I'm gonna be looking for a middle value as a base color, a highlight color, and that's gonna be the bright edge, and then a darker color to do the shadows and end accenting effects. So first, I'll pick a light, middle range, and then the dark color. So you have a nice little gradient. This will make it really easy for blending, makes everyone life easier too, for doing all sorts of effects and stuff. Um, so we'll start with the middle range color. I recommend doing the middle first because it creates that base layer. That way you can then go over with highlights, low lights, and really kind of develop the dimension through that. So first we're gonna just do a really basic coloring. And these are 10 millimeter lead points. They are really dense tips. So do not be afraid to put some muscle into it because they could definitely take a bit of a beating. These are established for both adult artists and children. Um, so you know if it can stand up to kids, it definitely can survive a lot of things. So I recommend really leaning into the piece. Um, you wanna lay on a thick layer of pigment. Again, I'm not super worried about having the perfect, perfect, perfect blend because we are gonna go over this with water. And that's when we're gonna go ahead and smooth it. And same with edges. These colors are definitely gestural. So like these rougher edges, I'm gonna go through with a water brush afterwards and clean it up. So do not stress at this point about having the perfect cleanliness. We're just looking to get a lot of color down and really just enjoy coloring with these guys. They're super creamy, laid down very nicely, and they're super vibrant. So after I finished laying that base color down, I went ahead and added in a highlight. I switched out the examples, but I added in a highlight for you on the left edge and a low light on the right edge. The next thing we're gonna do is use a water brush. So this is just any run of the mill water, run of the mill water brush. Um, you could do it with natural fiber, synthetic fiber, any kind of brush. You just need something that can add a little bit of a water element to it. So I'm going to get some water, tap it off a little bit because I don't want excess, and then just start a very simple blending. I like to encourage people to go from highlight to low light. It tends to be a more natural blend. And again, if I have a little too much, I'm just going to tap it off, jump right back in. Then I'll go section by section to start building that gradient. And this is when you can start smoothing out these lines. If I had a rougher line up here, it's very easy to go back in and just blend that out. 
So I'll go ahead and do that through this whole piece and we'll create a nice consistent dimensional gradient throughout. So the next thing I did after blending this all in is I used one of the metallic colors. So the set comes with either a gold or a silver metallic and I love them on dark surfaces because they have got that great reflective shine. Um, so I'll just do a nice, bold, thick outline. I'm not gonna water blend this, but you certainly can if you prefer to. And just do a strong outline to help bring out the color in the middle of the letter form. So after finishing doing the metallic outlines, I'll do the same thing. I'll take a woody, do a little inline, some lettering effects, and then I go in with a carbothello to add some nice botanical accents. So right now I'll show you really quickly a fun way to do an easy flower. So to do botanical flowers with the Carbothello, since they blend so well, I like go, going and picking three colors again. So I'm gonna have a middle range value, highlight and low light. So for today, I'm probably gonna do, I think a red, orange, and yellow. Um, so we'll grab, let's do red, and let's do an orange. And these will work really well together. To start off, again, I'll go back to the white Carbothello pencil. I'll just do a basic circle. And then do a center circle, and that's gonna be the main point of the flower, that center base. For me, doing petal rhythm, I like to do three and three. So I'll do one, pick about a third of the way over, two, three. And then the same thing, I'll tuck one, two, three. And that's an easy way for a beginner to understand how to place petals and have like a natural barrier where the petals will end. Um, so first thing, I'm gonna color in that base. And it can be super loose, these blend great, so don't be afraid to kind of just lay the color right on in. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and do the low light color first. That's gonna be on the petals tucked behind. So I'm gonna do it about to the halfway mark. I'm just gonna add some red. And at this point, I'm not super worried about going over the white because we're gonna blend that in during this process. So you'll see about halfway up. Then I'm gonna take the highlight color. That's gonna go on the top half of the top petals. And again, go over the white. Don't worry about that because we're going to blend this all together at the end. And anything we don't get, we can pick up with a kneaded eraser. These are super easy to pull the colors back. So about halfway on all of these, then the last thing I'm going to do is take that middle range color and that's going to be my blending item. So I'm going to start in the back ones. I'm going to go top to bottom, blend from light to dark. I'm gonna go straight up to that middle line, the equator of that petal, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is do a soft blend. And that's gonna pull these two colors together. Again, the Carbothello's blend super great. So just let the pen do all the work, or the pencil do all the work. So these are some examples of ones that have been finished up. These show a couple different blending variants. So we got a pink and a purple and a red. We got the red, orange, yellow. Um, and then also a leaf as well. The same thing works for the cool colors and the greens. Three solid colors. I got a lime, got a neutral green, and got a deeper green. Blended them together. And then I actually just went out with the woody and drew right on top. So if I have a highlight I want to add in or some sort of stem or anything like that, the woody goes beautifully over the Carbothello without smearing it. So this craft is really great. It's super basic. So you can have any sort of level of skill. You can do all sorts of different flowers. Again, it's just focusing on blending these, showing the water solubility of both items. Um, and just having fun with it, just doing whatever comes naturally as far as the letter forms and the botanicals go. And then these are just some simple or some fun examples of kind of the two items in different mediums. So we've got the woody I've done on a wood palette here, painted over with an acrylic. Here's just the Carbothello with a dry blend. Again, these tools are super great. They blend together beautifully. They're water soluble, so if you need to add water or wet media in as well, it's super easy to do. And they're just a lot of fun to have fun with. So these tools are a lot of fun, whether it's a wet medium or a dry medium, all sorts of different surfaces. They're just a great tool to have in the arsenal. So the Woody and the Carbothello, great to demo with, great to make projects, and thanks for watching.